and I want that to be your prayer as we have our conversation today, that God's will and your will can be joined to be one in your life. Because I know that's how together we create an absolutely amazing life. When we link up our desire with the same desire that comes from the center of the creator of the universe. We're talking today about the way in, in three parts beginning today, how we can set an intention to, to create among ourselves and within our own life the most amazing 2014 ever. And it all begins with our intention because there is huge power in the thoughts that we hold, the creative thoughts we hold for the life that we want to see in 2014. So today I'm talking about something really important and essential. It's called, ha ha, what goes around comes around or the law of circulation. Yeah. Now, th now there's a little electronical symbol up there because it's very similar to what we know in science as Ohm's law. My very first love as a child and growing up was science. And I love it that unity has absolutely no argument with science whatsoever. Unity completely embraces science and it, and it, and it understands all scientific discovery as part of the way as we as human beings are learning about the universe that God created. And there is no conflict between what science knows and unity knows. As a matter of fact, they are exactly the same. Now, Ohm's law is a scientific law based on electricity and the movement of electricity. So those of you that are not scientific geeks, I want you to take a big deep breath. You're going to come away today, oh, knowing a little bit of physics and a little bit of electricity and a little electronics, and how cool is that? Ohm is a German fellow. His name was George Ohm. And he published his law in 19, 1827, a long time ago. And it's a basic law of electronics. Essentially, there is Dr. Ohm right there. Eventually, it says, the amount of current in a circuit depends on the amount of voltage available and the amount of resistance in the circuit. Well, isn't that fantastic? Does that make perfect spiritual sense? It does. If we translate the little symbol on the side, is the electronic definition of Ohm's law. Now, if you imagine that current, is, which is the, by the letter I on the top, represents that, that manifestation of the energy of life that's in us. It's the way you feel when you're in the flow of life. It's that zazz, that pizzazz you have in life, that current in your life. So I want you to think about the current and the amount of energy that you are expressing and exuding. Voltage means in this formula, the energy of God, the amount of energy that's available. So I want you to think for a moment. How much voltage is there available to you? What, 10% maybe? If you've been really good, maybe 15? Oh, what? All of it? You think all of God's energy is available to you? You're so right. You're really smart. Absolutely right. All of the energy of the universe is constantly available to us. The voltage is all available to everyone. Resistance... <clears throat> That's us. <laughs> We're the resistors. I'll talk about that in a minute. Wattage is the W. Represent, it's called wattage. It's like a lost electricity. I call it wasted electricity. I spend a lot of time wasting my energy on certain things. So let's look at his law again. The amount of current in a circuit, which means that amount of great energy we're expressing in our lives, that amount of joy de vivre that we have, depends on the amount of voltage available. Now, we know there's an endless amount of voltage available. That's the power of God. And the amount of resistance in the circuit. Oops. So there's really only one thing that is making a difference in the amount of energy that we're expressing in our life and that's the amount of resistance that we are holding for it oh okay now that's science folks and it's also a spiritual truth i have some lovely assistants that are going to bring up because you know me for some of you you like to see it in order to believe it well i'm going to show it to you this is reverend sky the science guy you may remember the god box we had the God box here before, and it is, <laughs> thank you very much, it's plugged into an absolute unlimited amount of source of supply of energy and voltage, and this represents your life. I can see it all right now. Aha. Uh -huh. It's a little dim right now, 
because this is the resistance that we have. Notice that it's pretty much full-on resistance. If we lessen our resistance to life, oh my gosh, look at there. We get to have this bright and joyful life. And when we become more resistant to life, it begins to fade down. Now you're saying, oh, you ain't fooling me. You just hooked that up to a dimmer switch. Well, yes, I did. <laughs> you're so smart. Well, a dimmer switch is nothing but a variable resistor, for those of you that don't know, and when you turn the resistance up, down, you get more current flowing through it. So let me ask you this, <laughs> smarty pants, <laughs> what's the dimmers in your life? Where's the resistance you have? Where is it that you are turning down that endless flow of love and life that it, to express in yourself? If we're all connected to it, if we all have an absolute abundant source of energy, why isn't all of our light looking like this? Instead of sometimes it's like this. It's because of this. And that's in us. It would be really nice to elbow the person next to you and say, well, it's their fault. It's their resistor. I'm sorry. The circuit is in you, and it's us. It's our resistance. Now, frequently, thank you, Van Adnan, that resistance has to do with change. Oh, no, you're not going to talk about that. No, I'm not. I'm going to talk about this instead. My dad used to have one of these, only it was about 10 times bigger when I was growing up. Some of you may know what this is. It's an ohm meter. Can you believe it? See, I'm not making any of this up. I want you to know this is real science. This is a meter that is used to measure resistance. You, if I take these two things and put them together, the needle goes all the way going, no resistance. If I put one on each side of my mouth, it, there's a little bit of resistance. How cool would it be if we had a spiritual ohm meter <laughs> where I could say, here, sir, Hold on to this. Now hold on to the other side. Hmm. You have about 50 watts of prayer you need to do. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh -huh. Wouldn't that be great if we just had something we could plug ourselves into and say, how resistant am I to the will of God? Let's see. Oh, wow, I'm really resistant. <laughs> you do have such a meter. We just haven't looked at it. And you know what that meter is? <laughs> it's your life. It's your life. If your life is not shining, if your life is not filled with brightness, if your life is not filled with that flow of God's love and energy through it, then there's your own meter. Something's resistant. Now, I'm not here to tell you what that is. That's other preachers' jobs, not mine. <laughs> They'll be the ones to do that. But I will be the ones to encourage you to keep looking and seeing what that is. It's important to know, this is Dr. Ernest Holmes. He's the founder of a church called Religious Science, which is just like Unity. He said that when the law of circulation is retarded, stagnation results. It's only when we allow the divine current to flow through us, in and out, we really express life. The law of giving and receiving is definite. It's just what I've been saying. Only when we lower our resistance so that energy of God can flow through us in every single aspect of our being, then the light grows. Okay? We'll talk a minute about why we don't do that. We are the circuit controllers. What did the poem say? Who is the master of my soul, the captain of my soul? It's me. That's why I chose that poem for you today. In the book of Proverbs, the great wise Solomon said, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Talking about what we think is the life we manifest. And Jesus said it this way, give away your life. You'll find the life given back, but not merely given back giving back with a bonus and a blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. See, our resistance is generally to hold on to things. That's our general resistance. We hold on because of fear. That fear is usually that there's not enough now of anything, and there's definitely probably not going to be enough tomorrow. Now, that enough can be anything. It can be, I'm going to hold on to love, because there's not enough love right now in my life, and there may not be enough love tomorrow. I'm going to hold on to money because I don't have nearly enough money now, and there may not be enough money tomorrow. 
or I'm going to hold on to this because whatever, whatever it is, we're holding on to it. And the holding on is the resistance because it's trying to flow through and we're grabbing onto it going, no, don't flow, just stay right here with me. And it doesn't work that way. If it doesn't flow through us, it's not going to go up there and hit the light bulb and light up our life. It just doesn't work that way. Bruce Lipton is a wonderful scientist. He uh, is a, the man who wrote the book, The Biology of Belief, an absolutely brilliant man. He said that the nature of the mind is to make coherence of the world, which in other words, it means it has to all make sense for us. So if you have a program that says in your mind, I do not deserve, your brain will not let you generate behavior that contradicts this because its nature says it has to be coherent. This is part of our problem. We've sort of grown up being taught that we don't deserve that flow to go through. We're not good enough. Who here is good enough for the whole goodness of God to flow through you? Well, there's one or two of you unity people. I thank you very much. God bless you. I do those. Things. The rest of you, we're going to move you along because it doesn't make any difference. There's nothing you could ever do or not do that would lessen the availability of God's love and energy in your life. Nothing. There is nothing. It is always there. I don't care what you did yesterday. I don't care what you did before. I don't care how many times you went to prison. I don't care how many rehab programs you went to or you should go to or <laughs> <laughs> that you're in now. It makes no difference. The absolute, ultimate, ex inexhaustible power of God is available to each and every person at all moments in time. And if we are not feeling it in this moment in time, it is because we are the ones that are holding on to something that is stopping it. And so my job to get really excited is to exhort you, which is what preachers do, exhort you to let go of the resistance and to trust and to know that there is enough. There is always enough. In fact, there is this huge, amazing promise of more than enough. And who doesn't want more than enough? Jesus said, don't be afraid of missing out. You're my dearest friends. The Father wants to give you the very kingdom itself. We are plugged into way beyond 110, 224, 40. I want to share with you what something that Jesus said in the book of Matthew. It's from that famous time when he was talking on the mountain called the Sermon on the Mount. And I'm reading to you from a translation called The Message. It's my favorite one. It's very common English language. And this is what Jesus says. And I love, I love his opening line. It's so good. He says, what I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax. To not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way God works fuss about these things. But you know both God and the way God works. So steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all of your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. What an amazing and beautiful promise for us to let go and to let that energy flow through and light up our life. So I have a very important affirmation for you. Remember, it doesn't matter what you've done. I don't care who you are, where you've been, and God doesn't care. God only wants you to know this. You're very loved. And for you to know that and to claim it. This is part of the oldest hymn I ever learned when I was a child. Anybody else learn it? Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Okay. 
So you can say this without too much trouble, right? God loves me. Let's try it. God loves me. Okay, good. Even when things aren't going right, and even when you screw up, even when you hurt people, even when you make a mistake, what do you need to know? God loves me. Okay, good. Paramahansa Yogananda said, work for God. Love God alone and be wise with God. When an ordinary man puts the necessary time and enthusiasm into meditation and prayer, he becomes a divine man. So no matter who you are or what you've done, with meditation and prayer, you can become a divine man, a divine woman. And then, as we become divine, we and God create a life of joyful abundance because we're letting that flow go through us. Can you join me? Let's say this out loud together. God and I create a form of joyful abundance together. Okay? That means we're not doing this alone. That means we're tapped into that amazing power that's unlimited. That means no matter what happens, we know we can do this. Let's say it one more time. God and I can create a life of joyful abundance together. Good. I want you to know that more than anything else. You and God can create a joyful life of incredible abundance. And the next two weeks, we're going to talk about how that's going to show up and how we change our belief so it happens for all of us. Will you close your eyes with me for just a moment, please? All the real transformation takes place inside, so I invite you to go there now. Go to that place where you and God can meet, where it makes no difference how many times we've messed up, how many times we've forgotten. How many times we've made other kinds of choices. It just doesn't make any difference. This is a place we can always come and always be loved. I want you to be in that place now. This is a place where we can make that commitment. And even if you think, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to make it, that's okay. If we forget, we recommit. And if we forget again, we recommit again. And we recommit again. There's only love in this place. There's only the open arms of a God who adores you. Rest in that place now as we come to God in the sacred and holy silence. <laughs>